Hi there, good afternoon and welcome. You're watching the Mutual Fund Corner. I'm Mangla Malu. With me is Sumera Abdi in the Mutual Fund Corner, the show where we answer all your mutual fund related queries as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. But before we do that and look at the markets, it has been a fairly choppy session all through the trading session. The Nifty opened the green, sold off and now a bit of recovery is what we're witnessing though the frontline indices are still in the red. The mid-cap index is mildly underperforming. The key underperformer today has been the Nifty Bank and it's the HDFC Twins. HDFC Limited as well as HDFC Bank which have dragged the frontline index lower and we are seeing some cuts on a few of these PSU banks the likes of Canada Bank etc. Chain Irrigation too our ticker team tells us is at the low point of the day. So what's leading this recovery in the last few uh, minutes 15-20 minutes we have Reliance Industries that's trying to move a little from the lows of the day along with that we have uh, IT stocks they're doing fairly well uh, TCS is closer to the high point of the day and we have Infosys too recovering from the lows. Uh, first up all the top stories and then we hand it over to Sumera in the mutual fund corner. Trade truce rally fizzles out, the Sensex and the Nifty trade weak in line with the Asian markets. Weakness in the HDFC twins, Reliance and m, &M contribute to the fall, the mid-caps too weak. Financials trade week ahead of the RBI policy tomorrow. CNBC TV18 Citizens Monetary Policy Committee does not see any immediate rate action but expects the central bank to change its stance to neutral by the next policy if not this one. Sun Pharma's clarification on whistleblower allegation fails to assuage street concerns. The stock gives up morning gains. Ramdev Agarwal, however, tells CNBC TV18 that old corporate governance issues will not impact their business and earnings. And Bajaj Finserv holds on to the 20-25% growth guidance per year, says the NBFCs in general will need two more quarters for liquidity to normalize. That's CNBC TV18 exclusive. And with that, we hand it over to Sumera. Mangalam, thanks very much for that. My guest this afternoon is Harshvardhan Roomta of Roomta Securities, who joins in to answer all the queries that are being sent in by viewers. So, Harsh, good afternoon. Thanks very much for joining in. Our first query, in fact, is a very interesting one, and this is a conundrum that a lot of investors face. I'm going to get to the question first. Neera Fruitwala has written to us from Gujarat. So, he has investments actually in four funds, right? So, he has a thousand rupee SIP in each, which he started somewhere in. 2016-2017 odd. DSP uh, small cap regular plan, Birla Sun Life equity growth, SBI blue chip regular and the HDFC hybrid equity fund which he started in April 2018. I think we have Nirav on the line with us as well. Hi Nirav, can you hear me? Yes madam, good morning. Good afternoon. Tell good us. afternoon. So good we know your four schemes now. Uh, what is the question that you have? Uh, yeah, I want to review my first my portfolio of four schemes. Okay. I, and I am investing through SIP and mutual funds. Hmm. Uh, I want specially, I want to advise specially on BSP BlackRock micro cap funds. Okay. My BSP BlackRock small cap funds. Hmm. 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 Okay. okay. And I am having 10% loss in, in hmm. the same yeah. scheme. Hmm. Okay. Do you have any goal in mind? Yeah, I have a retirement plan of 4 crore in 25 years. Okay, so you're, uh, what, only 28, right, at the moment, and you're looking at uh, to retire at uh, close to, what, 50, 55. Okay, uh, Harshwazan, um he has about 4,000 rupees which he's investing uh, monthly, right? Now, one of his questions, of course, is the uh, DSP small cap fund, where he's facing a bit of a loss. Uh, but given that his uh, time horizon is 25 years, one, should he continue in the fund? And two, his goal of four crores, uh, you know, while the amount itself uh, seems realistic, uh, his uh, 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 journey, you think, seems a little too far-fetched? Absolutely, Samara. Uh, if you just have a look, he's investing 4,000 rupees for a period of 25 years. Even if he exploited that at a growth rate of about 14%, yeah. that is reasonable to expect over a longer period of time in a diversified portfolio. Even if we do that, you know, the end corpus accumulated with this 4,000 a month would be about 1 crore. So very clearly, uh, Nirav, if you're targeting uh, 4 crores, you will have to invest 4 times more of what you're doing right now. That does not mean that you have to do it today itself. I mean, don't get so disheartened. Uh, the idea is, as in when, uh, you know, your income permits you to increase your investments, make sure that you keep adding on uh, towards it because your target is very clear of four crores. The second question which you had, when, which was actually worrying you, was this DSP small cap fund. 
Now, if you look at the entire portfolio that you have, you have a large cap in your portfolio, you have a multi cap, you have a hybrid scheme. So, in that context, having a small cap which you're investing since 2016, you can continue doing that. And as in when, as we've also, you know, club it together with the first suggestion that I gave to you, which was that as your income increases, keep increasing your investment amount. So when you're increasing that investment amount, make sure the allocations are only towards large cap and multi caps. So automatically, if you do not increase your investment in small cap, the allocation, the, the overall allocation to, to a small cap fund will reduce as you keep going further. So with that in mind, you can continue doing what you're doing and uh, you don't need to make any changes in your portfolio as of now. Okay, when should he review it next? So well, he, all these are actively managed mm -hmm. funds. So a review needs to be done once in two years. Okay. So uh, had it been a passively managed fund, like an mm -hmm. index fund or something, you can continue investing Even without longer, yeah. worrying about it. But any actively managed fund needs mm -hmm. to be reviewed uh, once in two years. If you've done a lump sum investment, mm -hmm. uh, one physical, one large amount invested mm -hmm. one shot, then probably once in a year. All right, Nirov, I hope that uh, works for you and all the very best. I hope you're able to increase your SIP amount so that you're comfortably able to meet your goal. Up next, we have a query coming in from Ronak Rajpal, who's on the line with us from Mumbai. Hi, Ronak, how can we help you? Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. I'm uh, 23 years old mm -hmm. and I've been investing in mutual funds for about three years now. Wow. And I'm looking to expand my portfolio. Mm. And I'm confused between do I go in for an ELSS fund or do I open a PPF account or do I go in for both? Okay, are you working? I'm working. I'm in the Merchant Navy. Okay, uh, so Ronak, first of all, congratulations that you, uh, you know, started investing at 20. So that's excellent uh, and good going on that front. I'm only confused why you have chosen um, and that to PPF and ELSS. Is it for a particular requirement? I mean, I, I presume P PPF is a safer uh, investment than mutual funds. So that's the reason I'm going, looking for a PPF account. What is the reason that you want to make this investment? I mean, is it linked to a goal? Are you looking to buy a house or fund something? Or is it, uh, uh, you know, for your retirement? I mean, you're still very young, so I'm sure you have a couple of goals in mind. What I'm would you... to buy a house by the age of 35, 36. Okay. And approximately how much money would you need for that? About one, one and a half crores. Okay, um, so um, uh, Harshwadhan, um, uh, you know, here's Ronak. Uh, ideally, he should have an extremely aggressive profile right now, but it looks like he wants to play it safe. He's looking to buy a house in, say, the next seven, eight, uh, maximum ten years. Uh, I'm sure you are equally confused about this choice between a PPF and an ELSS. Uh, he says that he's tried to narrow down to safer options. So, well, uh, uh, Sumera, what you need to understand, what is safe in investing? Hmm. So let's understand the parameter and you know the consideration and the importance that we give hmm. to safety. So if you're investing in a debt product which generates a return of about say seven or eight percent, you know that's hmm. not even or just about beating inflation. Yeah. Okay, it may be just about inflation. So what you could do with 100 rupees today, if because of inflation the product is going to be available at 108 rupees after one year. That's exactly the return that your money has mm. generated. So you've never created wealth in that sense. Mm. So the perception that we want safe investments at the cost of returns is actually eating into the purchasing power mm. of money. So if you have a longer time horizon, which is 10 years for that instance, safety would mean actually trying to retain the purchasing power of your money mm. and able to buy more than what you could buy today. Mm. So you have to take that calculated risk wherein you, you know, and if you're investing in equities for that matter, so you're investing if you're investing via SIPs, so you're investing regularly every month, buying at every level of the market for a mm. period of 10 years, the potential to earn a higher return over there is definitely more than to uh, than what you do with a fixed return product. So the confusion between now coming back to PPF versus ELSS. Mm. So if your requirements are 10 years away from now, you understand equity, you believe in the growth of the country, mm. then you will definitely want to take part, participate in the growth of the country. Mm. How do you participate in the growth of the country is when you invest in the economy which is the industries and the companies that are uh, a part of the economy. So uh, what I would recommend to you, uh, now, uh, let's not confuse too many things. Ronak, you, your goals are 10 years away from now. Mm. You, uh, you are young. I mean, the goal that you've set is also not something that is absolutely time bound. Like if you don't buy after 10 years, there is going to be a, a major problem yeah. in your life. You can even extend that goal to say 11 or 12 years, mm. or it could be even 15 years for that matter. So choose an ELSS fund. That would be helping you save tax. I'm believing that is your objective because you picked PPF versus ELSS. Actually, that's what I thought that, uh, you know, December being this tax saving time, my initial thought was he's looking for some sort of a, a tax saving uh, mechanism. Absolutely. So if that is your objective, then uh, between PPF and ELSS, considering your you know, specific requirements, you should choose an ELSS fund. 
And in case you don't need to save tax under Section 80C, then you could even choose an open-ended or a non-lock-in kind of a uh, mutual fund scheme. And it could be just about anything under the sun that is offered. And you can accumulate for that particular goal that you have in your life. Ronak, I hope that uh, answers your query. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, if you could please suggest a few ELSS schemes. Hush. Absolutely. So I can give you two names uh, that you could consider. One is an Access Long-Term Equity Fund mm -hmm. and the other would be an IDFC Tax Advantage Fund. So you could choose any of the two depending on the amount. If you're investing anything up to 5,000 rupees, stick to only one scheme. If you're investing more than 5,000 a month into ELSS, then split it into the two schemes that I've rec recommended. All right, Ronak, uh, all the very best and uh, happy sailing to you. Up next, uh, Mr. Vijay Gopal Achari is on the line with us from Hyderabad. Hi, Mr. Rao, how can we help you? Uh, hello, ma'am. I am investing in BSL Brilla uh, Sunless Mid Cap Fund, ma'am. Still okay. uh, five years. Mm. I am continue in this fund, ma'am, uh, or uh, I can choose to shift to another fund, ma'am. Okay, uh, sir. Do you have a portfolio? Or is this your only investment? No, no, ma'am. I have a portfolio, ma'am. Okay, you have so you just want advice on this one particular fund. So uh, yeah, yeah, now this advice uh, uh, is, uh, uh, you know, we don't know where exactly this mid-cap fund fits into your portfolio. Therefore, I'm going to ask Harshwardhan to just objectively evaluate the fund itself. Okay, so uh, if you look at this particular scheme, uh, this certainly isn't the best scheme in the portfolio, in, the, in this category. So when we talk about Birla mid-cap not being the best fund in the category, it does not mean it is not good at all. So there is a, there's a difference between having a good fund in your portfolio vis-a-vis -vis the best performing fund. And unfortunately, which scheme is going to be the best is only known after that period is over. So we mm. cannot really know which is the best scheme today, uh, you know, which is going to be the best scheme 10 years from yeah. now. So having said that, what I'd recommend to you is whatever you've invested over the last five years into this particular scheme, let it remain as it is. Do not try and, you know, redeem out and switch out out of this because there will be tax implications which you don't want mm. to unnecessarily bear at this juncture. However, the future SIPs that you're doing in this uh, mid-cap fund, instead of investing in this Birla mid-cap, add an HDFC mid-cap opportunities fund to your portfolio. So you will have whatever you've invested till now lying as it is in Birla mid-cap. Future investments will go into HDFC mid-cap opportunities fund. So you'll possibly get two good funds in your portfolio and hopefully one of them will be the best after five or ten years from now. All right, uh, Mr. Achari, I hope that works for you. Basically, just switch from one mid-cap fund to another. On that note, let's take a very quick break. Come back with more queries in just a bit. Stay tuned. Welcome back. There's some news coming in from the international quarters. Uh, the top EU court advisor has said the UK can cancel the Brexit uh, or can cancel Brexit without asking for permission from the other EU members. On account of that, we're seeing some strength come by in the pound dollar. So all that happens now is that on Tuesday, the UK can cancel the Brexit without asking for permission from the other EU member states. A group of Scottish lawmakers had sought a legal ruling on if and how the UK's request under Article 50 to leave the Union could be unilaterally revoked before the Brexit deadline of March 29, 2019. Uh, UK Prime Minister, remember, uh, Theresa May had invoked the exit clause in March 2017. So what happens now? The e EU has, uh, or the European Court has already held the hearing, taking evidence from the group of lawmakers who said they wanted clarity to help the decisions made by the UK Parliament. And the British government has opposed this case, arguing it is a politically motivated bid to frustrate Brexit. So from here on, Tuesday will be the more important day we have to watch out for. We're seeing some strength on the pound dollar. With that, we go back to Sumera, who is uh, uh, waiting by with Harshwadhan Rumta and a lot of viewers. Thanks very much, uh, Mangalam. Once again, our next uh, caller calls in from Andhra Pradesh, Mr. Sai Kumar is on the line with us. Hi, sir. How can we help you? Hi. My name is Sai Kumar. Namaskaram, CNBC. Good afternoon. Uh, Tell us, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Sai Kumar. We can hear you. Yeah, actually, I'm a 40 years old. I'm a government employee. Hmm. Uh, I started SAPS from uh, 2016 onwards till date. Uh, hmm. And I have a couple of funds of uh, six, six funds of SIP till now, and hmm. I will continue for the coming 10 years. Hmm. And uh, four funds in a lump sum. Hmm. Uh, I would like to, my aim is to create a corpus of 1.5 to 2 crores in uh, coming to, uh, 10 to 12 years. Hmm. Is that possible to, to verify my portfolio? If any changes are required, please advise me. Okay, what is the amount you're investing, um, uh, say, each month roughly? 
Yeah, actually, in uh, SIP mode, I am. I've been investing from twenty five thousand per month. Okay. Each fund is uh, four five five thousand. Okay, that's fine. And uh, how much have you invested? Uh, you know, roughly as lump sum. Lump sum will be at around uh, uh, five lakhs to six lakhs till day. Okay. Well, uh, Mrs. Aikumar, you've been quite busy actually in the last uh, two years. You've accumulated what uh, close to ten funds, if not more. Um, Harshwardhan, how would you rate the portfolio? He has six SIPs which are ongoing, uh, accumulate, I mean, totaling to about twenty-five thousand rupees a month. About five six lakhs also lies in um, uh, funds which he made as lump sum investments. Um, is he on track to achieve his goal of two crores? Okay, so uh, let's just evaluate this on uh, on two bases. The first is the portfolio. Right. Okay, per se. So, if you look at uh, you know the portfolio, there are six SIPs. However, they're divided up across different categories. So, mm -hmm. you have two in the mid-cap category, you have a one in a multi-cap, mm -hmm. you have a hybrid, you have all those kind of mm -hmm. things. Then there are lump sums, of course, that mm -hmm. is invested. So, he's got a low-duration fund, he's got a debt fund, mm -hmm. all of that bit. What I'd uh, you know recommend on this is that everything is going fine so far. I wouldn't really want to change the portfolio. Mm -hmm. The scheme selection, there could be a possibility of tweaking a little bit here mm -hmm. and there. However, having said that, as I said, you know there is a best performing scheme and there's a good scheme. Yeah. So, uh, you know, an investor should always target to have good schemes in his portfolio, mm. which could have the potential of becoming the best. Mm. You cannot ever chase the best scheme. Yeah. What is best reflecting today in the last mm. five years' performance may not remain best in the next five years. Absolutely. So, having good schemes in your portfolio is good enough. So, in mm. that context, you're fine. I would not like to make any changes in the portfolio mm. here. The second part is with investing this particular kind of amount, can I accumulate one, mm. one and a half, or two crores? Mm. Now that largely depends on you know what the market performance is going to mm. be. You have ten years in hand, uh, so I don't think there should be much of an issue there. Mm. I'm more concerned whether after ten years, one and a half or two crores is going to be sufficient. Mm. Yeah. Because mm. you know I'm not too sure whether you've taken inflation into consideration. Mm. However, let's not get into that topic and confuse uh, Mr. Sai Kumar a lot. Uh, what you need to do, what I recommend, continue with your portfolio as it is. Don't make changes there. You have 10 years. Evaluate whether one and a half or two crores, whatever target you're set, whether that is going to be sufficient. You're a government employee. You would ha have some retirement benefits coming from the government yeah. as well. So put all of that together and, uh, in a, a, and analyze whether that total amount that you're going to accumulate through your own investments plus the retirement benefits, whether they're good enough. If not, maybe you will need to be a little more aggressive with your portfolio. If you need to be a little more aggressive, which means you have to get out of your uh, hybrid schemes or debt schemes and push that money into equity. So that is the reason. Hmm. Uh, I don't want to get into whether this money will be sufficient or no. It's more important, whatever you're targeting, whether that is going to be sufficient or not. All right, so essentially choose a top-down approach. First, uh, Mr. Saikumar, you need to establish the exact amount you would uh, need at that time and then work backwards from there. And that would perhaps uh, be a more meaningful exercise. Up next, uh, a query comes in from Abhishek Jain, who's written to us from Bengaluru. Uh, so he has two queries. One, of course, is that his UTI ULIP is going to mature in 2020. Uh, he wa he's wondering if he should switch to a mid-cap fund. Uh, I mean, is that a wise decision or should he withdraw the money and then sort of stagger it and invest it uh, via STP, etc.? Uh, he has about five to ten years at his disposal on that itself is a very uh, wide time frame, so I'm going to let you work with 10. He's a moderate uh, risk profile. Um, as well, he has a second question that he has selected some funds, which is the Aditya Birla 96. The, uh, uh, he has a long-term fund as well and the Parak Parik multi-cap fund. Now, is this a good selection for him to work with? Uh, so let's take one query at a time. The first query uh, that he had was, uh, should he withdraw out of this uh, UTI ULIP that is coming? Uh, that is maturing and invest it, uh, you know, somewhere else, or just simply switch that money into the multi-cap or a mid-cap of UTI itself. Mm. So uh, very clearly, Abhishek, I mean, you have 40 fund houses offering their services to you, and uh, all fund houses have their own set of expertise, a diversified set of expertise. So what I recommend is that you withdraw the money out of this. You know, evaluate what exactly how you're going to construct this further portfolio. I mean, it could have certain portion of large cap, mid cap, small caps, or it could have debt and equity. It could have hybrid products. So sit down and just evaluate how do you want to split this money that you're going to get in your hand for your future goals, which is say 10 years from now, and then choose one category from one fund. Out. So if you have, if you're choosing a large cap, take fund A, any one AMC, 
and take a large cap from that uh, AMC, take a mid cap from another AMC, take a multi cap from a third one, so that at least you get the expertise of all the fund houses. If not all 40, just have four or five in your portfolio. So you have different fund houses offering you the services, why not take it? The second question was, you've got certain schemes that you've uh, shortlisted for your investments. Well, I'll, I'll give you, uh, I'll retain two of the one, the two schemes that you have in your portfolio and I'll add two more. So yes, uh, if you have a requirement for an ELSS investment for a tax saving purposes, Aditya Birla Tax Relief is a good fund and then you can mm -hmm. choose that. P include a nifty fund in your portfolio, an index fund in your portfolio. So IDFC nifty fund is one option that you can have. Uh, a value-oriented investing philosophy is very important in these times. Uh, ICICI Value Discovery Fund is one such option. And the Parag Parag Long-Term Equity Fund that you have in your portfolio, uh, that you've already selected, you can continue with it. So these four schemes will give you a, a kind of an exposure into large mid-cap, will give you all, all those kind of uh, areas that you're looking for. All right, Abhishek, I hope that works for you. Harshvardhan, thanks very much as always for joining in to advise our viewers. On that note, we're going to wrap up on MF Corner. Do stay tuned. All the last time market action comes up in closing bell.